So, personal dosimeters, individual monitoring is the measurement of the radiation doses received by individuals working with radiation. The personal dosimeters is are used to verify the effectiveness of radiation control practices in the workplace. It is useful for detecting changes in radiation levels in the workplace and to provide information in the event of accidental exposure. So, as a medical physicist, especially in radiotherapy facility, it is important that we um, monitor the radiation dose received by the staff. Of course, for the purpose of regulation and also for the for good purpose. So these are the personal dosimeters that commonly used in radiotherapy facility. We have the film badge, the thermal luminescence dosimeter or TLD, the radio photoluminescent glass dosimetry, the optically stimulated luminescence or OSL and the direct reading personal monitors. Let's start with film badge. So this is an example of a film badge. Film badge, a special emulsion photographic film in a light light wrapper enclosed in a case or holder with windows with appropriate filters like the film badge. The badge holder creates a distinctive pattern on the film indicating the type and energy of the radiation received. While one filter is adequate for photons of energy above 100 keV, the use of a multiple filter system is necessary for lower energy photons. Since the film is not tissue equivalent, a filter system will be used to flatten the energy response, especially at a lower photon beam qualities to approximate the response of a tissue equivalent material. Cumulative doses from beta, X-ray, gamma ray, and thermal neutral radiation are evaluated by measuring the film optical densities under different filters and then comparing the results with calibration films that have been exposed to known doses of well-defined radiation of different types. Film can also serve as a monitor for thermal neutrons the cadmium window absorbs thermal neutrons and the resulting gamma radiation blackens the film below this window as an indication of the neutron dose. Nullier track emulsions are used for monitoring of fast neutrons. Films are adversely affected by many external agents such as heat, liquids, and excessive humidity. Example of this is an X-ray picture or X-ray film. So the picture formed in an X-ray film is due to the radiation hitting a photographic film. So the photographic film is composed of silver halides. These um, silver halides will be split by the radiation leading to the formation of metallic silver particles. So these silver particles are black and it implies that the radiation dose increases with the darkness of the film. So the more radiation exposure, um, the more blackening of the film. And film badge are used in radiotherapy as a personal dosimeter to keep track of how much radiation exposure have received the staff. Let's go back to the film badge dosimeter. As you can see, a uh, film badge dosimeter has a film, and this film is contained in a plastic holder that has small uh, absorption plates. These small absorption case plates are made of lead, tin, cadmium, and plastics. And also an open window to detect um, weaker energy or weaker radiation. So the blackening behind the different plates depends on the energy and type of radiation. So using absorption plates like the copper, aluminum, and lead, 
has a, a relative optical density that can be used to identify the general energy range of radiation. So this used to detect different kinds of nuclear particles and different um, energy range of the radiation heat hitting the uh, film badge dosimeter. So uh, if you want to see to nuclear particles, you have to modify the film batch decimeter. So the next personal decimeter is the thermal luminescence decimeters or TLDs. The TLD badge consists of a set of TLD chips enclosed in a plastic holder with filters. The most frequently used TLD materials are lithium fluoride, magnesium, calcium sulfate, and calcium fluoride. For the lithium fluoride, it used titanium as a impurity. For the calcium sulfate, it used dysprosium. And for the calcium fluoride, it used manganese. So those impurities are used to produce trap states for energy electrons. So remember, in a uh, solid state detector, like the TLD, are two process wherein we we store the information which is the radiation and we retrieve the information which is the radiation that we will explain it later badges that use high atomic number TLD materials are not tissue equivalent badges using low atomic number of phosphors do not require such complex filter systems TL signal exhibit fading. So the badges currently used for beta monitoring have a relatively high thresholds for beta particles, about 50 uh, kilo electron volt, because of the thickness of the detector and its cover. TLD are convenient for monitoring doses to parts of the body. So like what I have said earlier that TLD is a solid state detectors, and when we uh, say solid state detector, it has two process. First, the storage process, and the second is the retrieval process. So we all know that the first stage is that we uh, subject the the decimeter into a stimulus, and the stimulus is always radiation. Now, um, all kind of, all kinds of a solid state detector, they are differ in the retrieval process. The TLD, uh, this means that heat is the means by which we retrieve the dose information. So the method of TLD is is on the idea that it uses crystals to trap the electron which is the end of the stage one, storing the information. So when the stage one is done, meaning storing the electron, the retrieval process is the next step. And to retrieve the acquired dose in the crystal, it must be subjected to heat, which is the stage two. So we measure the dose based on the light signal accumulated by the crystal. And the light signal carries the dose information. So the amount of light signal emitted is proportional to the dose in soft tissue. Coming back to the previous slide. So this is an example of a TLD. So usually TLD uses a crystal since it has uh, the same absorption as the soft tissue. And as you can see, this is the TLD cassette, and this is the TLD card. So the TLD card composed of three plates, and these three plates composed of copper, perspex, filter, and open filter. So these are responsible to detect different kinds of radiation or nuclear particles. So this one, this plate is responsible for uh, weaker radiation since it is an open window. 
the middle plate is uh, composed of perfect filter. The top plate is composed of a copper. So the TLD is used to detect theta and gamma radiation. The third personal dosimeter that are that is commonly used in radio therapy facility is the radio photoluminescent glass dosimetry. So the radio photoluminescent glass dosimetry or PL are accumulation type of solid state detector that use the phenomenon of RPL to measure the radiation dose. The material used is silver activated phosphate glass and the dosimeters come in the shape of small glass rods. When silver activated phosphate glass is exposed to radiation, stable luminescent centers are created in silver ions. The readout technique use pulse ultraviolet laser excitation. A PMT registers the orange, flu orange fluorescence emitted by the glass. The RPL signals is not erased during the readout as the dosimeter can be reanalyzed several times and the measured data reproduced. Accumulation of dose is also possible and may be used for registration of the lifetime dose. The RPL dosimeters typically cover dose range of 30 microsievert to 10 sievert. They have a flat energy response within 12 kilo electron volt to 8 mega electron volt for personal dose equivalent. The RPL signal exhibits very low fading and is not sensitive to the environmental temperature, making it convenient for individual monitoring. So the RPL gas dosimeter is also uh, a salt state detector. It is also similar to TLD, but instead of using crystal material, uh, the RPL used uh, glass as a luminescence materials. So the objective here of using glass is to increase the sensitivity of luminescence material by controlling the composition of element in glass compounds. So the principle here of the RPL glass dosimeter is that when glass compound is exposed to radiation, the chemical characteristics of the silver ions cause formation of what we call color centers. So the color centers is where the electron that excited from the radiation exposure is being dropped. So, uh, if you remember in TLD, we use crystal material to trap the electron. Here in the dosimeter, we use uh, we use glass uh, to form color centers, wherein the electron will be trapped after the radiation exposure. So, the trapped electron is subjected to stimulate with pulse ultraviolet light and excited again to the higher visible orange light. So the visible orange light is an indicator of the in intensity of the radiation. And this is how we, uh, we measure the radiation dose using the RPL glass dosimetry. So this is an, uh, an example of an RPL glass dosimeter. So for the RPL, uh, we can read this multiple times. Unlike in TLDs, um, it's very sensitive. So we need to know the exact temperature of the heat in order for us to get the radiation dose. Because once that you commit mistake in TLD, there is no way for you to retrieve the radiation dose received by the by the staff. But when using a, uh, RPL glass dosimetry, um, we can need uh, RPL multiple times. Next, personal dosimeter is the optically stimulated luminescence or OSL. OSL or optically stimulated luminescence contain a thin layer of aluminum oxide during analysis, the aluminum oxide is stimulated 
with selected frequencies of laser light producing luminescence proportional to the radiation exposure. OSL are highly sensitive. This high sensitivity is particularly suitable for individual monitoring in low radiation environments. The dosimeters can be used in a wide dose range of the 10 sieverin photon beams from 5 kilo electron volt to 40 mega electron volt. The OSL can be reanalyzed several times without losing sensitivity and may be used for up to one year. OSL is also a solid state detector. It is similar to TLD, but again, uh, they are different retrieval process. So in TLD, if we, uh, we use heat to retrieve the dose information. Here in OSL, we use uh, LED or laser to retrieve the dose information. So this is an example of an OSL dosimeter. Uh, an OSL uh, usually composed of four filters and each OSL has a specific filter compensating for a specific uh, particles. So this is an open window. This is the um, ABS plastic. This is made of aluminum and this is made of copper. So the denser filter can filter out the lower energies. So open window usually used for detecting a weaker radiation. For the ABS plastic filter, it can filter the beta particles. For the aluminum, it can filter out the beta particles and low energies. And for the copper, it allows only the highest energies to pass through. So the OSL can also measure neutron, but uh, we need to modify it first. The last personal dosimeter that, common, that is commonly used in radiation therapy is the packet dosimeter or direct reading personal monitors. Direct reading personal monitors, uh, it used to provide a direct readout of the dose at any time. It also used for tracking the doses received in day-to-day -day activities and it also used in special operation. So the direct reading personal monitors uh, fall into two categories. We have the self-reading packet dosimeter and we also have electronic personal dosimeters or EPDs. So the self-reading packet dosimeters resembles a pen and consists of an ionization chamber that acts as a capacitor. When exposure to radiation for a period of time, the ionization produced in the chamber discharges the capacitor. Exposure or air curve is proportional to the discharge, which can be directly read against light through a built-in eyepiece. The use of packet dosimeters has declined in recent years because of their poor useful range, charge gauge problems, and poor sensitivity compared with EPDs. For the EPDs, it is based on miniatures counter or silicon detectors are available with a measurement range of down to 30 kilo electron volt photon energy. Modern EPDs are calibrated in personal equivalent dose. EPDs provide an instantaneous display of accumulate, accumulated equivalent dose at any time. EPDs have automatic ranging facilities and give a visual and audio indication. EPDs are very useful in emergency situations for immediate readout of the equivalent dose received. The FANTO. In radiotherapy, we are concerned with the absorbed dose received by tissue in the irradiated volume. Since it is seldom possible to measure this directly, it must be calculated. 
and because of this calculation must be done on a routine basis, it is necessary that the calculation must be reliable and simple. Therefore, to determine the absorbed dose, we use a what we call phantom. So phantom or phantoms are tools used by physicists to measure radiation under different conditions. It allows measurement of radiation in a controlled environment with minimal risk to staff and patients. So these procedures give us the dose at a reference point and it enable us to calculate the dose at any other point once the dose at the said reference point is known. When a patient is placed in a photon beam of known quality and quantity, the photons will be absorbed and scattered and both the quality and quantity of the beam will be changed. So to study these changes, experiments have been performed using phantoms to replace the patients. So the phantom should be a material that will absorb and scatter photons in the same way as tissue. So since the human body consists mainly of water, the phantoms are either water-based or water-equivalent phantoms. So these water-based and water-equivalent phantoms are qualified to measure those distributions. There are three types of phantom. So we have the slab phantoms, water phantoms, and anthropomorphic phantoms. For the slab phantom, slab phantoms are square blocks of varying thickness which may be built out of different materials. The most commonly used material is a water equivalent solid, but other phantoms representing long, bone and metal may be used. Slab phantoms may be placed within a beam to simulate various conditions. Ionization chamber may be placed within pre-hollowed holes to measure dose rates or film may be placed between two slabs to measure beam profile and isodose distribution. This is an example of a slab phantom. And this is how the slab phantom place in a uh, LINAC or Cobalt 60 equipment. Slab Phantom is a water equivalent phantom. So the Slab Phantom is made, made up of water equivalent polystyrene for high energy photons and electron radiation. So it's usually used for uh, QA of high energy photon and electron in LINAC and Cobalt 60. The phantom is used in combination with irradiation detector like the ionization chamber and the corresponding plates allow the detector to be positioned as required for the QA task. The slab phantom can be used for measurement with a homogeneous measurement with irradiation detector and of course measurement of those distributions. The next type of a phantom is the water phantom. Water phantoms are the primary tool used for absolute dosimetry. The water phantom consists of a transparent plastic tub about 60 cm in all dimensions filled with water. Water phantoms are useful for absolute dosimetry as they are homogeneous and water equivalent, a close substitute for soft tissue and muscle. Most absolute dosimetry protocols require tests to be carried out in a water phantom. Water phantom is the most commonly used phantom in radiotherapy. It's usually designed for absolute dose measurements in radiation beam with horizontal beam incidence. It is also suitable for the calibration of uh, ionization chamber used in radiotherapy. And the uh, water phantom design allows cross calibration of a field ionization chamber against a calibrated reference chamber. One uh, disadvantage of using a water phantom is the weight and presence of water. And it must be also considered the difficulty of the water phantom with electric circuit, which must be waterproof. And the last type of a phantom that is commonly used in radiotherapy facility is the anthropomorphic phantom. 
The anthropomorphic torso phantom is used for the evaluation of non-uniform attenuation and scatter compensation methods. The phantom simulates the anatomical structures of radioactivity distributions for the torso of average to large male and female patients. These phantoms are typically formed by multiple slabs arranged in the axial plane. This is an example of an anthropomorphic phantom. So this is for the upper torso. And this is for the lower torso or for pelvic. Anthropomorphic phantoms are objects that simulate patients. And it is made of materials with similar tissue characteristics as normal biological organisms. Anthropomorphic uh, phantom can be used for trial and error to assess the optimal use of radiation like image reconstruction techniques. It can also be used for teaching staff uh, different imaging techniques of exposure factors. And that's it. That's the end of my report. Thank you so much.